Hello and welcome to episode 4 of This Week in Linux. Today is January 4th, 2010 and Let's go ahead and get right into the news. As an update to the story on GIMP 2.7 having a single windowed mode, it seems that someone working on their Ubuntu PPA has packaged GIMP 2.7 for Ubuntu Jaunty, Karmic, and Lynx. That is versions 9.04, 9.10, and 10.04, which is yet to be released. It's actually still in the alpha stages. For more information on that, check my website, thisweekinlinux.com. I'll have a link to the story and to the PPA archive with the code on how to install it. It's long been a complaint for new users to the Linux community that Linux is just too difficult to get into. That said, there have been some significant strides in the last few years to make it a lot easier and more user-friendly. Ubuntu is taking things one step further. They're actually working on an Ubuntu beginner's manual. Yes, there have been books released on the subject before, but this is the first one that's actually going to be released with the distribution, and I believe they said they're going to put it on the desktop so that any new user can just open it up and get themselves familiar with Linux from the get-go. A full version is not quite available yet. It looks like it's still in the early, early alpha stages. But with the, the great work that's being done in the Ubuntu community, it should be done in no time flat. I'll put a link to a website with the current version embedded on thisweekinlinux.com, and I'll put a link in the sidebar. Go ahead and check it out. It appears that a brand new media player is in the works for KDE, named Bangarang, which I assume to be a throwback to the movie Hook with Robin Williams. This player is said to take all of your available audio and video content, put it in one, one central location, and make it have a clean, restrained interface so you can actually see your content and the GUI doesn't get in the way that much. Version 1.0 Beta 3 appears to be available pre-compiled for Mandriva and for OpenSUSE, but you can still grab the source from opendesktop.org and compile it yourself if you want to give it a shot. I'll put links on thisweekinlinux.com. Now the news, a blog over at linuxworld.com is now claiming that Chrome might be the best browser for Linux. That's a bit controversial in my opinion, and I haven't tried Chrome recently, so I can't say one way or another what I think of it. However, they say the benchmark scores are much faster than those of Firefox and other browsers, and the ACID3 test, which I believe Firefox makes a 93 out of 100 score on, Chrome makes a 99 out of 100, meaning that it's the closest to the actual web standards that you'll find currently, perhaps other than Opera. I think Opera's stripped down version has 100 out of 100, but stripped down version doesn't have all the same features. In addition, Chrome on Linux is now supporting extensions, which puts it one step closer to being a full Firefox replacement for most people. It seems there may be a bit of a licensing issue though, as you're not allowed to reproduce, recreate, copy, distribute Chrome without specific permission from Google. So that may hinder its acceptance into the default Linux community. It looks like Firefox may stick around as the default on most Linux distributions for the time being. In media news, Cybus Technologies is going to be releasing a pop box, a direct competitor to the already existing Roku box and the upcoming Boxy box, which allow you to stream internet content direct from the web to your TV without the need of a middleman. The device is said to be $129 when it releases, which is right at the midpoint price range, with the Roku being $99 and I believe the Boxy Box to be $200. All these internet television devices being under $200 makes it really difficult to avoid buying one of them. And finally, in software news, Digicam 1.0.0 has released before Christmas as an early Christmas present to the open source community. Included in this release are a new first run assistant, which helps you make sure your, all of your media is in the appropriate locations and is easily accessible to Digicam, a batch queue manager so that you can take multiple images and do the exact same thing to every one. So for example, if you wanted to crop all of your images down to 1024 by 768, rescale them, resize them, any sort of thing like that, if you wanted to do it to a bunch of images at once, you just drop them into this queue manager, tell it what you want it to do, and it'll take care of it. Also included is a liquid scaler, which means that you can select one area of the image and scale the rest of it to fit. So if you have a 4x3 image and you want to make it 16x9, you can hold one part of the image and stretch the rest of it out. Microsoft released a similar technology a while back. I'd like to think that Digicam was working on theirs first, but who knows at this point, really. I'll put a link in the sidebar and on thisweekinlinux.com with the information if you want to check that out. And that's all for episode 3 of This Week in Linux for January 4, 2010. Thanks for sticking with me and leave any comments, questions, or suggestions in the section below. See you later.